In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to make this procedural animated glowing energy material. This does not work in Eevee as we will be using a volume node. I will open up a new blend file and I've added a monkey head and given my monkey head some subdivision surface modifier. I've also shaded the monkey head smooth. And then I've added a plane as a background. So select your mesh and go to material properties. And let's add a new material to the monkey head. Then go to the render properties and choose cycles and make sure you have your GPU selected. To add a material to our monkey head, let's go into the shading window. Then press set on your keyboard and choose render view to see the materials. I'm going to delete the principal BSDF and press shift and A and search for a glass node instead. And then plug it into the surface. And next we'll add a principal volume. So press shift and A again and search for principal and select principal volume. Plug that into the volume. We're going to bring the density all the way down to zero. We're going to bring the emission strength up and this can be adjusted later on as much as you want. We'll be using a noise texture to add the energy material. So press shift and A again and search for noise texture. So add that and plug the factor into the emission color. As you can see, it doesn't really do a whole lot right now. So let's add a color ramp to control the noise texture. So press shift and A and search for color ramp and drop it right here. You can move the handles around to control the noise texture. And you can also change the color to whatever you want. I will change mine to a pinkish color, something like this. So this is the result we have so far, but we're going to add more noise textures to make the result a bit more interesting. So duplicate your noise texture by pressing Shift and D while hovering over it. And plug the factor into the vector. We'll change some of the settings of this noise texture. So first change it to hetero terrain, and then decrease the scale a little bit. I uh, will leave it at something like that. And then let's add another noise texture to create an even more interesting texture. So hover over your first noise texture and press Shift and D again and plug it right here and plug the factor into the vector again. I'll decrease the scale of this one as well and increase the detail to max. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on added, you can hover over the last noise texture and press Ctrl and T and it's going to add a couple of nodes over here. If you don't have the node Wrangler add-on, you can add either activate it or you can just search for the mapping node and the texture coordinate nodes and add them. I'm going to plug the object into the vector. And here you can increase or decrease the scale if you want. I'll leave it at something like 3 or 3.5. We also want to control the output from this noise texture node a bit more. So let's add a mix color node by pressing Shift and A and search for mix color and plop it right here. So you can use this slider to increase or decrease the effect of this last noise texture. I'm also going to plug the vector from this into the B socket. And as you can see, we're getting somewhere right now. Uh, I think I'm going to decrease the scale of this noise texture a bit, maybe to something like 1.5 and just play around with the settings of the color ramp as well until I get something I'm happy with. In order to animate the material, we're going to use the location settings on this mapping node. As you can see, if we change the values here, that's going to move the material around. So let's add a driver to the X and Z values. I'll start with the X axis. So type a pound key and frame, frame and backslash in a number. I'm going to be using 80. The higher your number is, the slower the animation is going to move and the lower it is, the slower it's going to move. And also, if you add a minus in front of it, it's going to move the opposite direction. I'll also add a driver to the set axis. So again, type pound and frame backslash and add your number. I will be typing 30 here because I want it to move a bit faster on the set axis than on the X axis. If you want, you can add a driver to the Y axis instead, or maybe just to one of the directions, but that's all up to you. I will play around with the factor here and maybe the scale and detail of these different nodes as well as the color ramp. And then I will render out the result and show it to you very soon. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Bye.